Good morning. Welcome to Lattes with Lila. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited for a new beginning, a new month. And today I have such a special person with me today. Uh, someone I admire, someone that from the beginning, her story, it was just so encouraging and challenging to me uh, to continue growing in the calling that the Lord has for us to serve Him. And um, this person is Lisa Evans from Faith Assembly. So would you tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Lila, for this opportunity. But uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Lisa, and my husband and I are lead pastors at Faith Assembly Church here in Winterville. And God is just doing great things. I'm so honored to serve alongside Him as co-lead pastor. Mm -hmm. And also, I lead the women at mm -hmm. our church. And we're just seeing God do amazing things. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you are from Greenville or Winterville, this area, you have heard of Faith Assembly. Because especially the women's ministry, they do so much. And, and from the beginning, when I took this role, I was like, I need to know this woman. She's like a fireball. <laughs> she does so many things. And she does. She takes takes this so serious. So uh, you've been inspiring to me and thank you that we get to do this today. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions and um, I'm sure our audience is going to appreciate what you have to share today. But we're going to start with your quiet time, like how your time with the Lord looks like. I am sure without a shadow of a doubt that it has changed throughout the years and, and you had to adjust right based when you were raising little kids or now that they're grown or... Um, so will you walk us through your quiet time? How does that look like for you? For sure. When I began to think about my quiet mm -hmm. time and even what that might look like for other women, certainly I began to think that that changes seasonally. Mm -hmm. um, I also began to think about things that have impacted me, like reminding myself, not just as a leader, but as a woman that I cannot pour from an empty cup. Oh, that's good. And, you know, we cannot give to other women what we don't have mm -hmm. or to anybody. You can't give something to somebody that you don't have. Yes. And the things that we need to acquire in our lives that we need to give to others, that the scripture tells us to, we get during those quiet times. But I'll be honest, I'm very cautious when I use the term quiet time. Mm -hmm. I believe it's true. I believe it is. You know, if you go through the scripture, it is biblical. I even researched some in Psalm 62, 5. It says, let all that I am wait quietly mm -hmm. before God. But at the same time, you know, the scripture does not dictate to us what the quiet time mm -hmm. will look like. Yes. Um, for me personally, not just seasonally, but daily, mm. my quiet time looks different. Oftentimes, I know if you're like me, you scroll Instagram, you look <laughs> at the influencers and all the things. And the truth is, Lila, even on Instagram, there are people out there like posting videos and things about their quiet time. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed that women are seeing or even women are struggling with is they see these people talking about their quiet time and they get up in the morning and they have on their matching pajamas <laughs> and they're sitting there literally with their latte. Their Bible is open. It's very quiet in the house. The low music is playing and they have all the matching highlighters mm -hmm. that they can highlight the scriptures in their cute. Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, for me, I'll say it rarely looks like that, you know, and I was asking God, you know, what is the right thing to share about this? Because my mind even went to Elijah in the Bible. You remember when he was mm -hmm. in the cave mm -hmm. and there was a windstorm all around him yes. and there was fire and there was rain. And so Earth what, there was chaos all, all around yes. him. But he was able to hear the still small voice mm. of the Lord leading and guiding him. And so I think that that is, you know, as women, that's what we need to focus on. We don't need to focus on exactly what that looks like or how that's supposed to look. Because as a leader, as a women's pastor, I can tell you that most days it's just contending for my time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And same thing with my husband, with my girls, with my children. I want to have a relationship with them. So I make that a priority and I make That's sure that good. happens. Yes. I make sure I reach out to them. I make sure I call them on the phone or send them a text. You know, whatever that takes to keep that relationship alive, that's what I do with the Lord. Um, some days I get up and it's during my time that I take a walk around the neighborhood. Yes. It might be 
you know, when the worship music is playing in the car and a song, I'm just like, Lord, I just love you today and I need you today. And I just begin to cry out to God in the car. So I think we do need to quiet ourselves before the Lord. You know, mm-hmm. we don't need to have all the distractions and the yes. noise, mm-hmm. but we also, you know, don't need to give up and quit, if you will, when it doesn't look mm-hmm. like, even the world says that it should, because we as Christians know mm-hmm. that our Lord doesn't call us to like this certain perfect thing. Mm-hmm. He just calls us to have a relationship with Him. Mm-hmm. So for me, it changes daily. Yeah. What an encouraging um, moment this must have been for any woman uh, who is going through transitions, and even during the summer? I mean, we just experienced the summer, and and and, and there's this always there, there's always this guilt, and I'm like, oh, I have not mm-hmm. been diligent on doing it in the morning or doing it in the middle of the day, like this is structured time. But uh-huh. some women or some people are just wired differently. Like I know of a person is the most influential person to me, and 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 she does have a, a, a challenge to stay still and she does have a challenge to mm-hmm. to not talk so it looks different for her and that that doesn't mean that um she's not clo- walking closely and intentionally with the Lord. It right. just looks different. Mm-hmm. And it might be on a walk because mm-hmm. she needs to move. And it might yeah. be uh, with music because it just helps her to create the environment. Absolutely. I mean, so it, it's just very encouraging to me. And as you were saying that, I was reminded when my kids were little, mm-hmm. it was crazy. I was <laughs> yeah. everywhere, rushing everywhere. Um, and I just felt guilty of, right. I'm like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't spend time with the Lord this morning. It doesn't have to be. Absolutely. And it just has to be this intentional relationship, mm-hmm. right? Like you have with your yep. daughter and I have with my, like this, it, it has to be an intentional Absolutely. communication. Um, so when you do, um, do take time to be yes. still on the couch outside and, mm-hmm. and, and you need to study mm-hmm. uh, for him to speak to you. I'm sure you study the Bible, but what are the resources you study uh, you use for your quiet time? So in general, or let's just call it like generically, I will use like a devotion book and make sure I have like a devotion that I can pull out of each day. Um, But my most favorite uh, thing to use like on a long-term basis Mm -hmm. is I like to buy those uh, devotional books that are on a book of the Bible. Okay. Um, if you've seen those, yes. like you can buy them in there for Genesis or Mark yes. or whatever you decide that you want to dig into. I like those and I just kind of go through the book of the Bible and I get a lot of encouragement and find things specifically out of the word with that. So those are my favorite and I use those and usually those last me at least a year, mm-hmm. you know, but just however quickly God leads me through it. I don't put myself on a time schedule, um, but I love that. And it's, God uses those timed perfect with what I'm walking through in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, recently talking about the wind and the fire and the chaos, but still having that quiet time and hearing that still small voice. You know, I lost both of my parents Mm -hmm. within a week Mm -hmm. of each other. And prior to that was walking through a very chaotic season of back and forth to doctor's appointments and caring for them. So even recently I've lived out how, you know what, your quiet time is so important, but don't dictate what that looks yes. like. Just remind yourself that you need the Lord and mm. you need to contend yes. for your relationship with Him. And so get you a devotional book. You know, I, I could name many because there's just different ones that you can pick up. Even the calendars, if you have, mm-hmm. if you work in an office, just to see that verse every day, you know, that can feed mm-hmm. your soul. But I do love those devotional books on the books of the Bible because it gets you directly into the Word. That's and, wonderful. Would you, um, do you remember out of, from the top of your head, like what was the name? And I know that they are books, but like mm-hmm. any author, anything? I don't. I'm sorry, but like there's tons of them, you know, and I've used different ones. Like I'll just see one that I like, but they're basically just like they're a devotional book and it'll have just Genesis or Matthew or Mm -hmm. Mark. And it's just simply takes you through the book of the Bible Mm -hmm. and it gives you places you can write down uh, expounding on the scripture or whatever. And I I like those because it gets me directly in the in the word. Love it. So make time. Don't put the Holy Spirit in a box on how it should be. Just be spontaneous with him, but do make time for him. Absolutely. Um, all right. So the next question for you is, and I I do want to know this so bad, uh-huh. is the most influential person in your life. Um, who has this person been for you? Mm-hmm. So immediately I knew who my mind went to. And, you know, for me, 
I have had a lot of pastors and a lot of women preachers or mm. women pastors that have impacted my life. Mm. And you know, a lot of those people, Lila, I don't know if it's been like this for you, but people can impact your life and you never really meet them personally. Yes. Like you you watch mm-hmm. them from a distance and you learn from them and you you value things that they do. But for me, it's my grandparents. Mm-hmm. And it's my grandparents. It's my grandma on my dad's side and my grandfather on my mom's side. Those wow. are the grandparents that I knew. And I find that even to myself so amazing because neither of them were pastors. There are no former pastors in my family. Um, but they lived a life before me that mirrored what I wanted to be because it's who I am that is what is so important, not the title that I have, not that who who challenged me to be a pastor or who encouraged me to be a pastor or how I ended up there. It's that I'm Lisa and that I love the Lord and that I'm a daughter of the King. Mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's who I am. Um, and None of that is based on my title. So that's what I love about this is that my grandparents lived a life before me, spoke into me values and things that I saw them do that made me who I am today. Like I walked that out and God called me into that, you know, and I'll never forget the moments that I spent with them. I'm an only child. And so I was prize possession. You know, they just wanted to spend all their time with me. And I spent the night with my grandma and, you know, Sunday afternoons would ride around in the car with my grandfather and he would take me for snacks at the local drugstore. And those moments shaped me. Mm. And more than anything, you know, more than any position or title or anything that that does, I want my life to leave a legacy impacting my children and women, people, children everywhere, that when they saw my life, Mm -hmm. that they said, I want to be more like Jesus, and Mm -hmm. I want to be all that he's calling me to be, and that's where it came from for me, and so they impacted me to be all I am today. That is so wonderful, Mm -hmm. so powerful. I think one of the lies that we, as children of God, give in to too much, too often, and too many of us, is the lie of, I'm too young, Yeah, I don't have enough experience, yeah. or I've done so many things that I, I, I don't feel with the integrity to share about, many right. uh, to, to help, or I'm too busy with raising kids and being married and working, or I'm too old, I'm irrelevant. Um, and I want you to give a message to those maybe mm-hmm. people, women that feel that way, that they feel that they are irrelevant. Maybe those more older grandmothers who are more passive and, and be like, I know I love the Lord. and I But what you just said about your grandparents and how that shaped you into who you are. Absolutely. I mean, look at the results. You're serving the Lord, actively, boldly serving the Lord. So uh, please tell our yeah. audience, give a word of encouragement yeah. on, on what they should do and, and what steps they should take to get out of that mm-hmm. lie mm-hmm. and move into that uh, call of the legacy that are called to yeah. make. So one of the number one things that I hear from women a lot is I am searching and I am trying to find my purpose. And this is from young women, young girls, all the way to the older, more wiser women Mm -hmm. that we encounter. And the thing is that no matter where you are in your season of life, purpose is right in front of you. Mm. You can spend your whole life seeking purpose, looking for this thing that you think that is purpose to you. Like, for instance, that you need a title or you need a microphone or you need this this place in your life that says, this is my purpose and this is my destiny. But that's not true. That's not even biblical. If you are very young or you're very wise and, and older in years, your purpose every day that you get up and your feet hit the floor is right in front of you. Mm. And what I have found is there is family in front of you. There are coworkers in front of you. There are lost people in front of you and your purpose is right there. And if you will be a vessel who will start right there with what's in front of you and be the light, 
be the love, be the joy, be the peace of God flowing through you to those people. God's going to give you more and he's going to give you more, even more Mm -hmm. platform, Mm -hmm. even into greater destiny. But you've got to stop allowing the enemy to blind you into saying, I don't have purpose and what is my purpose and expecting your purpose to look like my purpose. You're created in the image of God to be Lila and I'm created to be Lisa and, and call out every woman's name out there. So I encourage you, get up every day and say, Purpose is right in front of me, and I'm going to walk it out with the strength and courage of God. And you'll find that through the days, through the moments, through the years, God's going to give you more, and He's going to reveal more purpose and destiny to you. But you've got to start right where you are and follow the Lord. Amen. I receive that. We all receive that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, So we will walk boldly in whatever opportunity the Lord presents today. Yeah. Today. Let me be faithful today. Yes. So the Lord provides more opportunities in my obedience today for tomorrow. Absolutely. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Mm. Today. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Let's go into um, scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, I'm sure you have many stories, okay. many favorites, many, many inspiring and encouraging um, teaching that you can bring out of the word. But I want to hear of one. Maybe yeah. it can be one that has spoken to you uh, for years, and you have always go back to it, or maybe it's something that uh, in scripture that has spoken to you lately in the season that you've been, um, whatever it may be. So walk us through that story of the Bible and um, your words on that. Okay. So I'm going to read it to begin with here out of the Word of God. So if you're uh, listening and you want to join in or uh, in your Bible or on your phone, but it's Luke chapter 8. Verses 43 through 48. And it says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and they press you and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And then she made a declaration in verse 48, and he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in Mm. peace. I absolutely love that story. And I have gone back to that story so many times in my life because part of my life mission is to encourage women and see uh, women have enough faith in God that we preach, that we teach, that we say has changed our lives, to have enough faith in that God, in our God, to say, we're going to have obstacles. We're going to have areas in our lives that we look at that are literally hemorrhaging. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be your marriage. That might be your family. That might be relationships. It could be finances. It's so many things that we could sit here and list that we look at and say, this area of my life is literally bleeding. It's literally hemorrhaging. Mm -hmm. But my prayer and my life's motto is to be an encouragement to women to say, be a woman like this woman, Mm. a woman that maybe she had to walk through this for 12 years. Maybe it didn't change for 12 years, but there came a moment that her faith was so strong that she pressed through all the obstacles. She pressed through the crowd and she knew that if she could just touch Jesus, it would change in the right moment at the right time. And that fires me up. That encourages me. And that's what I want women to be. So when I read this and I look at this, you know, I see three things out of this passage of Scripture. And I wrote them down. I've shared them many times with people. Um, If it's okay, I'm just going to share them really quick today. But um, what, what I draw out of this when I'm looking and I'm praying for and I'm ministering to women is uh, when you look at this woman in this passage here in Luke, uh, It might sound silly when I say be more like her because we don't want to hemorrhage for 12 years, (laughs) right? But be more like her in her faith and her tenacity Mm. to get to Jesus, to see the things in your life made whole. Because we want to see whole women, right? Mm -hmm. Not broken women, not fragments of women. You can bring all those things to to Jesus, but then you're going to be whole. So the first thing is uh, 
to all the women out there. I don't know if this is for you today, but you got to want it enough to pay the price. Uh. And this woman did. She wanted it enough to pay the price of people talking about her, of going through seasons of isolation, but she yeah. wanted it bad enough to pay the price of all that to get to Jesus. Mm. And long story short, we've got to do that too. If our children are lost, if our finances are hemorrhaging, if I, we don't have a sound mind, if we feel all the time like we're less than and broken, wanted enough to pay the price to press through all of that and touch Jesus yes. because something will change when you touch the Lord. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have to make the decision to get to Jesus. You know, it's great to talk to your friends. I encourage that. Mm -hmm. Find godly wisdom. Find friends. Talk to them. But more than anything, sister, you got to get to Jesus. Yes. Jesus, he was healthy and walking. She was hemorrhaging and she was crawling. And if you have to crawl to get to Jesus crawl if that's what it takes. Jesus was surrounded and protected. She was isolated and she was despised. But you know what? All it takes is a whisper of his name. Just the mention of his name. You got to get to Jesus. That's where you've got to get. Certainly we need Christian counseling. Absolutely. Yes. Sometimes we need to talk to our friend. You know, we need all these other things. But most importantly, We've got to pay the price to get to Jesus, and you have to make the decision to get to Jesus. And the last thing is you've got to say it. You remember in that last verse there, mm -hmm. she made a declaration, and— um, she said, uh, daughter, be of, he said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. Well, in, um, in uh, Mark 5, 28, this particular account of this says, for she said— if only I could touch his clothes, it would make me well. Uh. And that's when she found peace. So sometimes we have to speak it out of our own mouths, not just speak the problem, not just, you know, she could have ran around to the crowd and said, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. This area of my life is hemorrhaging. But when she declared, I can touch Jesus and I can be made whole, if you look in scripture, that's when the peace came. Mm. That's when the wholeness came. And so I think we as women, we do a lot of talking. <laughs> we do a lot of saying things. And oftentimes I find myself guilty, you know, mm. because even when my parents were very sick and, and they both died a week apart, so much I could say about that, you know, I found myself questioning the Lord. And I found myself saying, God, where are you? I feel like I myself am hemorrhaging, you know, mm -hmm. my emotions, my mm -hmm. mind. This is this is bleeding out here, God, on how I feel. But, you know, I had to go back to the fact that, again, my relationship with the Lord, my faith in the Lord, my strength in the Lord to say, God, you've already told me why this is. You've already told me that you're enough. You've already told me that you would give me a sound mind and heal me. And so I'm going to walk in that. I'm going to press into that. And mm -hmm. that's what brought me peace. And so I love this passage of scripture because I know uh, Lala in, in serving and ministering to women, you know, that's our heart's cry. We want to see women made whole, but we can't do that for them. Mm -mm. We cannot bring the healing in their lives. Only Jesus can. And so they've got to pay the price, walk the walk and talk the talk mm. to experience the wholeness in their lives through Jesus. Ooh. So if you are with me, I'm sure you can type some fire emojis <laughs> on this episode because that was fire. That was so good. And it's so uh, convicting. Mm -hmm. It's so convicting that we as women, yeah. we we love to feel loved. We yeah. want to feel desired. We want, it's not that we don't take initiative to do things, but we, we want for things to be done oftentimes that we just sit down and complain and and, and, and and yes, we have all the reasons to complain, but we want things to change. But this woman took the initiative to Come get on. out of yeah. her way and do things and she touched Jesus. Like there was an intention. We need to do things. We need yeah. to go to Jesus. We need to pour out our hearts and how we feel and our Absolutely. anger and grieve and, and to him because the only one who can change yeah. is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was powerful. Thank you. Mm. And I think Lisa is talking from, not that we don't as ministers talk from a place of integrity, but Lisa experienced um, the loss of, of her parents. And before that, when I met her, since mm. I met her, mm -hmm. um, she has been uh, walking with her parents in their sickness for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and just experiencing this so recent, this loss recent, I mean, I, I think there there is... Um, a lot of integrity in, in what she's saying. So receive that for you. Um, okay, Lisa. 
um, we are moving to, and this is good because it goes with what you just talked about, discerning the voice of God. Um, Mm -hmm. How does that look for Lisa? How does discerning the voice of God look for you when you are needing to make a decision? When you are like, I need to, I need to, I need to know if I need to move to the right or to the left and I need wisdom and I need, I need your voice. How do you discern God's direction and voice for your life? Well, if we look at scripture, we don't have to question, can we know the voice of God? Mm. Because the Bible says that we can, if we are his sheep, if we are his people, Mm. because it says that my sheep will know my voice. Oh, that's good. So if we are in the pastures of the good shepherd, then we know that we listen to his voice. This might seem like a silly illustration, but just the other day, (laughs) I took my dog to the vet and there were a lot of voices, right, in the vet office, okay? There were people in the room, the waiting area. There were workers. There were even the doctor that came in. But my sweet little doggy, Bella... (laughs) She looked at me. She listened to me when I said, come up here. The doctor wants to check you out. Let's go this way. Like she was looking at me. That's so cute. And (laughs) you know what? You know, my sheep will know my voice. When you're in the pasture of the good shepherd, then you know the voice that you can trust. You know the voice you can listen to. So good. Now, a lot of times, and I know you have as well, in serving and working with women for 20-some years, another big question, this is a great question that you have here, is, you know, I don't want it to be me, Pastor Lisa. I don't want to take the wrong step. I, I, is it God? Is it God's voice? You know, the only way to know what voice to trust is to move in that voice. You know, my dog Bella knows she can trust me because she lives and walks and you know, does life with me and she knows that I'm going to protect her and lead her in the right way. Even animals know that. Even sheep know that. Mm. And, um, you know, so God is not waiting to punish us if we take a misstep. Okay. So let's, let's don't think that way because the devil is never going to tell you to do anything that advances the kingdom of God. He's, he's completely against that. Mm-hmm. If, if you feel in your heart that the Lord is saying to share your story, if you're like, oh, I thought God said for me to write this book. Uh, I thought God said for me this. If it is advancing the kingdom of God so. and your heart and your motive is in line with, Lord, this is for you. This is not for me and my glory. And you know in your knower, you know, if that's something that you want to do, or if it's something to please the Lord. Like we know our motives. We should lay those even back. Let's go back to our quiet time. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to our relationship with the Lord. Like if you lay that at his feet and you know it's for advancing his kingdom and his glory, the devil's never going to lead you in that way. So the only way to know that, hey, that's God's voice and I can trust that is to step out in faith that's good. and to try that voice and know if it lines up with the scripture. Of course, we know all the obvious. It's, God never contradicts himself. It's going to line up with the scripture. But if it's in line with good motives with your heart, with your mind, and with your life with the Lord, it is most likely the voice of God. Mm-hmm. And through faith and through practicing that and being in his presence, you will know that it's the voice of God. For me personally, again, I started, now everybody doesn't have this and it doesn't matter. And Mm -hmm. I want to show you that because as a child, you know, starting with my grandparents and then that legacy and that heritage going into my parents, uh, my parents were, we were a praying family. We were a family that practiced the presence of God in our home, not just in the house of God. We lived that most mornings before I went to school. Uh, me, my mom and dad would kneel at the sofa and we would have family prayer together. And That's they so would good. pray that I would practice his presence on the school ground that day. Those things impacted me. Mm. Maybe you're a woman out there and you're thinking, well, that's great, but I didn't have any of that. Well, why don't you start practicing his presence with your children, with your family? Why don't you be the starting ground for that? Because it's in his presence where you learn to know his voice. Mm. And um, I don't probably have time to unpackage all this today, but through that, through being in his presence and recognizing his voice, Before I was married, during a season of prayer, the Lord even spoke to my spirit and he gave me the name of my husband before I met him as my husband. And that is a story for a whole other day. But 
my point with that is to say, ladies, again, don't spend your whole life back and forth between, oh, is this the Lord? Is this God's voice? His sheep know his voice. And the Lord is going to lead and guide you into places of bringing glory to him, advancing his kingdom, bringing you into purpose and destiny. And walk in faith in that. And as you do that and as you practice that and stay in his presence, you'll be like, I've heard this voice before. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's the voice that I can follow. And don't crowd out his voices with voices that you want to put in place. Yes, have godly friends. I say that again. But again, press into Jesus and listen for his his voice and you'll know his voice and you can follow that with boldness. And again, if you make a misstep, God's not there with a ready to spank you. He's ready to guide and lead you. But take confidence in knowing that in his presence, you'll hear his voice and you'll know because his word says that he'll make our paths straight mm. and he'll make our paths sure. And so, you know, that's how I practice that in my life. And I've seen his faithfulness in that. And I think it's available to every woman if they'll do that with confidence and a surety, knowing that God speaks to his daughters and he's just waiting on us to have faith and courage enough to be obedient. And sometimes that's the problem. It's not really that you're questioning, is it his voice? You're afraid or we're afraid or oh. women are afraid. And so we're making up these excuses and, mm -hmm. oh, is this God? Girl, step out, tell it, do it, be it, live it, and let God flow through you. And don't spend your whole life and get to the end of your life. And God had so much purpose and destiny for you, but you spent every day questioning the voice of God. Walk it out. God will be with you. And as you do that and practice his presence, it'll become clearer and clearer and clearer as you walk the journey. I don't need to add anything to what she just said. That was good. And truth, um, I, I don't think it can be put in any more simple way. It's just follow the voice of God. He will advance his kingdom. And if he's calling you to advance his kingdom, do it. Mm -hmm. Don't don't give in to your fears, to our insecurities, to, through, through, to anything, to the past, to what I don't have and mm -hmm. what just trust and step and mm -hmm. step out in faith. Um, mm -hmm. That's good. Lisa, um, I don't want to close our time um, because I think you have so much more to give, but I do have one final question yes. uh, for, to ask you and is um, present this fun scenario. Mm -hmm. um, your your good friend is going away for the weekend yep. and she just wants to be with the Lord. And so she's leaving all the distractions behind and she's asking you for a book recommendation for this time with the Lord. Yep. What book would that be? Um, I always go back to this book. Um, probably people that know me, they're probably like, are you always <laughs> going to say this book? <laughs> I have led teams through this book. I've led myself through this book numerous times, and it's not a bestseller book. It's probably okay. not a common book, but it's called The Jesus Hearted Woman, and uh, it's by Jody Dietrich. Okay. Um, and the anticipation she built for this. And I'm like, I want to know what this book yeah. is because I want to read it myself. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this book. Yes. So it's 10 Leadership Qualities for Enduring and Endearing Influence to Women, for women that are looking for ways to grow and use their God-given gifts for the Lord. Um, again, talking about how to get past those obstacles and seizing the opportunities that abound. Um I like this book because it is real and raw. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just like a generic leadership that it talks about the real and raw things that we go through. A lot of people, you know, you might think they might be turned off by that because some people do say, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not, I don't have this. You know, why do I want to read leadership qualities? Because we are all leading everyone. If you're the mom at home today, doing the laundry, putting the babies down for the nap, you're leading today. Mm -hmm. You're leading today, wherever you are. And so this book, I have taken my teams through this book. Um, I encourage you as individual women to go through this book because it's real and raw and it will, I mean, what is our goal? Like, what is our goal to be Jesus hearted women? above all else. Our goal is not to be, you know, this, that, or the other. It's to have Jesus in our heart and to influence others in the most powerful way we can to be more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. And so 
no greater thing that I want to encourage women to to maybe read or study um, or be is the Jesus Hearted Woman. Uh, and so I love the title and it. I love the book and <laughs> highly recommend it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, now, this has been lovely. It has been encouraging. It has been so good. I wish there would be more words that I will know uh, to express what I feel this moment has been. It blessed me and I'm sure it's blessing many of us. Would you pray for our audience? Will you pray for our church, for the women listening um, and bless them? They're starting the day. So just just send your blessing and, and encouragement, encouragement to them, please. Absolutely. Lord, we come to you today with grateful hearts. Uh, we are so grateful and thankful for who you are, first and foremost. God, we just want to say thank you for being such a good father. Mm -hmm. Thank you for pouring out your blessings on each one of us today, no matter what any of the women are facing today. Today is a good day because you're a good father. And you are with each and every woman that is out there listening today or in the days to come, and we thank you for that. And God, I thank you that through our time together, our prayer is that seeds have been planted, that hearts have been stirred, that women have been drawn closer to you, and they have felt a desire and a refreshing to be more like you. God, I just speak against attacks that come against the daughters of you. I speak against those areas that are holding women back. And God, I pray that even through this time that Lila has so greatly put together for us, these questions, this sharing, I pray, God, that you will use it for your glory so that women will rise up mm -hmm. and do the things that you've laid on their heart and be who you've called them to be. God, my prayer and my heart is that every woman listening to this time together that they will be the woman that will pay the price to get to Jesus, mm -hmm. that they will push through the obstacles and the areas that attack their mind, the areas, the areas that are hemorrhaging or bleeding in their lives, God, that they will be made whole and that women will rise up and be all that you've called them to be and walk in a greater purpose and destiny. Thank you for using us. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to shine your light and to spread your love. And God, I pray a covering, a blessing over Ignite mm -hmm. Women, over this church, over the women in our community, our region. God, all the things that you have planned, we give you glory in advance. And Lord, again, we thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lisa. All right, ladies, this is it for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.